welcome to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapman. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I am your host, David Tatman. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a special guest in the studio this morning, uh, Emily Chenevere, who's running for House District 66. Uh, Emily is an LSU graduate in journalism uh, with a minor in theater, which mm-hmm. is, I find, really, really interesting. And um, Emily is here with us. So thank you uh, so much for being here today. Oh, thank you, David, for having me. I love, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to speak and to share a little bit more about my my campaign today. So. Yeah, well, thank you so much, and I enjoyed visiting with you pre-production. <laughs> and so uh, I did a little brief introduction of Emily, but Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit yeah. about yourself? Absolutely. Well, um, you mentioned a little bit, um, I am a LSU graduate, but I'm from Leesville, Louisiana, so that's okay. central Louisiana for anyone listening, and um, came to Baton Rouge when I was 18 and was at LSU, um, graduated, went through Manship School, and really started my career um, here in Baton Rouge at WBRZ Channel 2. And so I tell people, it was like, I was helping. I started out as an intern because, you know, every uh, comms grad needs an internship, right? right? So I was at, in, at Love the Newsroom. And then when Todd and Whitney were on the air for the morning show, I was kind of like a daytime, worked my way into a little job as like an associate producer type daytime for Todd and Whitney and would prep the show, help for the next day, line guest, all those kinds of things. Love storytelling, love people, interviews, that kind of thing. And then after that, for a season, I went to work at Healing Place Church, which is a large church here in Baton Rouge, or in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And um, we did a lot of storytelling on weekends. We have a lot of um, big big team, production team. And so I was basically in ministry for anyone listening who maybe you've been in ministry, you don't know much about it, but you kind of wear multiple hats, right. I'll be honest. And so I was kind of a co- communications person and then also helped with weekend storytelling and kind of would manage all, all of our team in that and um, really enjoyed that. During that time, uh, Hurricane Katrina, when I was on staff, Hurricane Katrina happened. And so our church was a huge part of that. No and doubt. so the communications efforts during that time really ramped up. Like, not not for not your typical church, I guess you'd right. say during that season, um, because we had so many resources across the country that were bringing in things, and so we were like to help people, and it was really one of the highlights of my life just to be able to serve and help people in the in, in that hard time. Uh, loved that, served on the team, but really um, had this kind of urge to go to film school. Went to film school in New York for a season, wow, um, for a year, and I was the Southern Belle in the city. That's what I like to tell people. And <laughs> my best friends were from ones from Canada at the time, and India, and Scotland, and there's just Louisiana Southern. <laughs> Bell. So um, they just wanted me to talk a lot there, I feel like. And so there's a Southern accent. So love that. Did a film there and came back and started working heavily in the film industry. Okay. That's really, um, I had that creative brain, but also kind of have a more of a brain of like, you know, but from a producing standpoint. And so I was able to start as a, um, I say, a, a coordinator behind okay. the scenes in movies, kind of like from that one to five million dollar range, and then worked my way up and started um, coordinating larger studio movies. And a lot of ones that were shot in Louisiana and Baton Rouge, some in New Orleans, and loved doing that. I loved working with people from all different types of just backgrounds. Right. I mean, the film industry brings people from all, all coasts. I mean, you had New York, you had California, and then Louisiana. And people are real different, right, yes, in these areas. No and so you working with people and learning how to kind of put a project together. As I was moved up, I started doing line producing and production managing. And that's kind of like a, I would say, like a contractor. Right. Where you have a whole bunch of, like, subcontractors. And you're having to work behind the scenes, you know, Hire, fire, budgets, making sure the project gets complete. And I love behind the scenes in that. Mm-hmm. Um, really love working with people in that capacity. So I was doing that for a season. Met my husband here. He had two wonderful children. We got married. I have two more. I'm a mother of four now. Mm. And uh, they are. we have a couple in our 20s, and like they're like growing and doing their thing. And then our littles, they're in second and fourth grade. Wow. And so eight and nine. Yeah. And so they're my, they're my, they're my passion. They're my legacy. Yeah. They are who, what I want to do. And so, you know, I basically started to do a lot of that. That's a little bit of my background, kind of what I've done. Communications. Also, at one point, was a communications director for an anti-human trafficking organization. Yeah, I saw that. Trafficking Hope. And so that was, a, that's actually a big part of my heart whenever you sit and you really start to understand what's going on behind the scenes with that. Oh, yeah. Um, and we are in an I-10, I-12 corridor, so we have to face this issue head on. 
Um, so that's another thing that I have done kind of in my past a little bit. So a little bit of ministry and media and communications has really been my whole my whole life. So you and I have a couple of connections because um, I represent the Louisiana Film Entertainment yeah, yeah. Association. So and I am a, an actor. I'm not going to say I'm a good one, but <laughs> I am hey, an and actor. Hey, I actually think on the I don't know if it's still there on the bottom of the LFEA email uh-huh. there is this picture of like an alligator and different artists and people in the film industry and i actually helped produce that okay shoot, i feel right. like at one point yeah. awesome. <laughs> and then we're we actually are very uh, heavily involved in uh, father buys um a metatonia gala that okay. we, uh, okay. we help raise money for yeah. every year yeah. on human trafficking and they're doing really great work and yeah. i i don't think people understand how significant of a problem I, I would agree. that is uh here in mm-hmm. louisiana and how bad it can be when you have things like um, I'll give you an example. I know during the NBA All Star Game, yep. it, was the, it was a huge issue. Huge thing in, sports. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, just our, I have some local contacts in law enforcement. So again, mm-hmm. just uh, connected in a lot of different ways. Absolutely, so, um, absolutely. But I appreciate so much your work and that. And then I would go to the um, the Healing Place. Mm-hmm. Um, I live right there, yeah. right? And uh, so they were giving out food and water to all the people who were stuck on the interstate trying during to get Katrina. out of town. I know. And I remember that. And I have a number of friends who go there. So, well, well, thank you for that introduction. I uh, want to talk a little bit about your district. We have a yep. statewide audience. So tell uh, people a little bit about your district. Obviously, it's a Baton Rouge district. It's a Baton Rouge district, Southeast Baton Rouge area. Um, it kind of wraps its way kind of almost almost in a U shape kind of in Southeast Baton Rouge, everywhere from University Club area, Blue Bonnet, um, going up to Burbank, and then the south side of Highland Road, where the country club of, of Louisiana, that area. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of naming some of the big areas sure. and um, they're Santa Maria, um, half of Shenandoah, the Tiger Bend, Elliott, Hushitu area. So basically, if you're looking at that Manchac line really up into Ascension, that southeast area, that's kind of that line where it stops before you get to Ascension Parish. Um, and so it's a it's a big district. It's, it's a big district. Yeah. And it's got a kind of a weird little wind it around does. it uh, from it, one end. It Be- does. Because as we were talking before the show, when I come out of my neighborhood and I look across uh, the street. It's not my district. It's right. your district. It's my, yes, exactly. Uh, so, exactly. Uh, I am now in uh, Barbara Freiberg's district. So, uh, well, good. Well, let me ask you another question that we ask all the candidates, yep. which is, what made you want to run for office? Mm-hmm. I get that a lot when I open doors. <laughs> Sometimes it's why in the world, right? Because you <laughs> right. um, But you know, for me personally, um, I have paid a lot of attention both at the federal level and state level. And I go back to this, and I always say this because my husband would come home, and I will work for home now and doing some you know, live event producing and different things um, to be able to have raise my kids. And I'm listening to federal committee hearings. And he's like, no one does this for fun. No one sits and watches committee hearings at the state level and the federal level. And I care about policy and I care about what's going on. And I think for me, having young children, you begin to see the world kind of through their eyes and mm-hmm. where they're growing up in right. and what, what the city you're in, the state you're in. And so that is a lot of my motivation, mm-hmm. honestly, is, my, is my, my legacy in the next generation. What is our city going to look like? What's our state going to look like? Um, I care a lot about education. I have young children. Um, it's a big topic all the time. When I'm knocking doors and I'm meeting people, education and crime um, comes up a lot. And then business, because mm-hmm. we are losing people. And right. no matter where people are, your listeners in this state, we all know that people are leaving our state. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. So what do we do? Right? Yeah, obviously, uh, lower taxes, tax code is very complicated. If people want to come here, um, they're, they're not coming here like they're going to other states if they're going to come to the South. There's a lot happening in more in some in some states right now, whether it's California, Oregon, New York, and people are starting to leave these areas, but they're not coming here. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm just too hope filled, but like I think we have the best food, the best people. Yeah. I think we've got great family values, and I think that that's something that we've got to build the other areas, right? Education, uh, and make it better. And I'm I'm a big proponent of that. So for me, it was really just looking at my kids and thinking about the future. And then saying, you know, I, I wanna I wanna be a person that comes to the table that can disagree without dishonoring it, one another, That's but beautiful. stand firm. Yeah right? Have great conviction, Mm -hmm. um, but respect each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I care a lot that I feel like sometimes I feel like is it's missing in the political arena and talking to people that Mm -hmm. feel politically homeless or Mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like sometimes they feel that. Mm -hmm. And I want to help that communications background that I have bring that to the table and bring good change and help good government for Mm -hmm. the people, Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I think that's, um, I think that's amazing. Um, I hope you can do that as a legislator because my son, um, LSU uh, mechanical engineering uh, graduate um, had to go to Virginia to get the job that he wanted. And Mm. that's just 
kind so of no parent wants that. It right? breaks my heart. Although it's nice to go visit Virginia, right? Um, right. And then he has uh, seven other uh, LSU engineering students who work in the, on that same project, which is wow. building aircraft carriers for the United States Navy. Uh, they're well, working on incredible. the John F. Kennedy. Yeah, wow. and why aren't there incredible opportunities like that right here? We could be building, you know, military right. contracts, uh, federal contracts. It just needs more of that. So I agree with you. I will say the work you're doing in the film industry uh -huh. is part of that, right? Yeah. It's a diversified it economy. Is. Oil it and is. gas is great. But yes. we need other ways for people to be engaged and be a part of the process. Correct. So. And, especially, and especially young people coming out of school, right? You want them to feel like, look, they may want to go somewhere and experience sure. life for a minute, but we've got to make sure that we're building the infrastructure, building the things for them when they come back, that right. when they're starting a family, like we are, is there a school option for them? I'm right. big on school choice because of, look, I, I grew up in a public school here in Louisiana in Leesville, Leesville High School graduate. Loved my experience, but every area of the state's different. And in our area, a lot of families are, Cat, they're playing for they're paying for private school. That's they're right. paying for Catholic school. So I care a lot about um, allowing the money to really help follow the child. Yeah. Um, let empower parents and let parents say, hey, you know what, this may not be the best school for my child, so do I have an option there? And I think that if young families, when they're starting and they're starting salaries and building their own businesses, if they have that and they feel like it's a great place for their child, they're, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. I think they'll be here. They'll stay here because there's nothing better than raising family, raising your own little family next to your family. That's right. And I think Louisiana cares about those I, things. I agree. And my son did not want to leave. Yeah. He wanted to be here, well, yeah, as, yeah. as I'm sure lots of people do. When I go up there, I cook a gumbo for all the guys and of the girls. Of course you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always a little cooler up there anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. so one of the things we do with our guests is we do a little magic trick, right? So you were elected last night, and, and then tomorrow you start, first day on the job. What are you going to do as the state representative for District 66? Well, I'll say, um, pray, hit my knees and say a big prayer. <laughs> like, Lord, help me, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm being serious about that. It's a big part of my life. Um, but um, I, I talk about education a lot. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I want to get to know um, colleagues and figure out what are some of the things that they have been trying to push across the line that I agree with, right, with right. an education savings right. account being one of them. What are some things that they are really making headway on that mm -hmm. they need um, they need a, they need someone to come alongside and help uh, co-sponsor or help push it across the line? I, I don't, you know, I feel like stepping in there, you want, you know, you want to learn and you want to see what, how things work um, and just say, hey, who are some good players that are really trying to create good government, lower taxes, education, and the same things that I care about. So building allies, right? I think that's a big point of um, building a strong state. It's not just about Emily Chenevere, um, although I'm there to make a difference. It's about working with everybody else that has that same vision for our mm -hmm. state. So that's very important to me um, is building allies and working with people. Um, and I would say um, some of the things specifically is I mentioned education. Um, you know, crime comes up a lot in my district. Um, so and I understand there's a role as far as every role of government. You've got the city has to focus on their role and the state and, and, and local police. But from a state police standpoint, you know, what are some things we can do to help recruit and get more people here? And I think there's been some good work done mm -hmm. um, with, um, you know, in incentivizing as far as getting police officers here. Um, but what are some things that we can do more like anyone that may be potentially retired? Now, again, I'm not looking at the budget. And day one, I probably haven't gotten through every line item yet. But are there some ways that we can work on um, if some officers are have retired can they come back into the force for a few more years without losing those benefits? Mm -hmm. I've been, there are some states that are doing that mm -hmm. because this is, Louisiana is not the only state that is losing police officers. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as you research, sometimes it's not having the greatest idea. It's like, who had a good idea that worked in another mm -hmm. state that can bring it here? Right. And would it work? Right. So that's a big part for me because I think that when people feel have schools and they feel have their options and they feel like um, they're safe, I think the business side will work itself out. Now, we have to have low taxes. We have to get rid of the franchise tax. We've got There's a lot of things we have to do. But I think that if people feel safe in their homes, they feel mm -hmm. safe in their community, and they have great schools, I think that's gonna that's a really good start. Well, that's your economic development package right Thank there, you. right? You Thank, can, yeah. Companies are not going to take their employees and move them here or someplace or where crime is high correct and put themselves in harm's way if they don't have to right and so that's a big uh I, that's a big deal uh, it's for a big me deal too. and i think I, you know i come from a communications background i always say sometimes people say oh it's just talk and it's just messaging i think messaging matters i think that all of us who represent our districts in our state 
Um, you know, because you represent your districts and you're voting and you're fighting for them. But your vote also, it's and it's also going to spread into the state of Louisiana. And so mm -hmm. I think those that are elected, we've got to have this message to people that are looking to move from other states that are more rigorous, higher taxes, and they're just, they feel out of control. Um, come here. And I think from a crime standpoint, messaging matters greatly. It I have does. a good friend that was in Oregon and they were looking at where to come because they said Oregon was getting too hard for him as an officer. And um, they did not come here because the pay was better in Texas and the schools were better in Texas. So a great officer, um, but chose Texas over Louisiana, although they actually had more connections in Louisiana. Right. So we just, we got to get those people to come here. And I think those are some things that if we could just sit around a table and have some of those conversations, what's working in other states, and let's maybe put that to action here. Yeah. No, I think, I think you're, um, I think you're right on. Um, so, uh, those are all the key issues, whether mm -hmm. you're here or in Shreveport or uh, yeah, in wherever uh, Tensaw you are. Parish. Yeah. Those are all the key issues. They may change order a little Correct. bit depending on their local school system, uh, but those are the big issues. And what you said about um, working with others, and uh, um, it, this is all about relationships. relationships. I'm a lobbyist, and it's about you know uh, treating people with respect. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're going to disagree on things, oh, sure, right? And that's sure. just part of life. There's going to be things you disagree on. But you've got to learn how to come together and figure something out. And it doesn't mean that you're always going to find where, you know, you're you're going to be in this on the same boat. But you have to be able to walk away and know that there's still a level of respect for each other. I agree with you. And and too often we've seen lately where there are people who make it personal. Right. And when you do that, it changes the world. So I appreciate you saying that because I'm not, I'm not sure that that's, you know, it, I think we are affected by Washington, D.C. politics. Yeah, for sure. And, for and sure. they can't come to a microphone without attacking each other. And so it's... It's, it's hard. Uh, yeah, uh, it is hard, it's but hard. it can be done. And I know legislators who have done it and done mm -hmm. it well. So um, so uh, tell us how you're going to win the race. I mean, that's the key thing, right? Yep. I mean, it's one thing to be a great legislator, but it's another thing to be a great campaigner. So right, I, no, I, yeah. exactly. So when the race is kind of a big job in and of itself. So tell us how you're going to win. Yeah, so look, this is something that I really have enjoyed. Um, it is, um, it's difficult because it's, it, is, it consumes you, but I love it. I genuinely like people. David, like I genuinely care. Um, I don't see how anyone could do this and not want to see people face to face and see what their concerns are. Right. Um, that's why you're there is for the people. And so um, I am doing a l grassroots. I have a really good team of people that are helping me, whether it's a few people walking with me, my husband walking with me. I've walked on lots of knocked on lots of doors. And that is to me, I think that's a big part of, of, of what I'm doing mm -hmm. because People can see me on the ground, mm -hmm. and they, I'm asking them their concerns, right? Um, huge part. You're, my, I'm doing my direct contact pieces, things to get in front of the face, you know, uh, in front of their face more and more. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to, like, team of people, um, even from a prayer team, I'll be honest, I'm getting all of it covered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, I've got, like, there's all the things there, right? So we're not, we're, we're like, I need help from all areas. Um, but the main thing is, <clears throat> is just that, that sweat equity. Mm -hmm. And so I just, that's one thing I tell people is that if um, you, you probably have got something on your door, mm -hmm. if you're not, you will, most likely right. if I can walk in that neighborhood right. um, you're gonna probably get a text message you're probably gonna get a phone call from my team members that are calling and, and here's what's awesome for me I have people helping me that you know what they're not even political really political mm -hmm. they've never helped with right. the campaigns mm -hmm. they're like I've never held a sign I've never knocked on a door for anybody but mm -hmm. I'll do it for you mm -hmm. I've never done a phone bank before mm -hmm. so and it's 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 moms and grandmothers and grandfather and it's you know it's these people that just they they feel that there's we need change and we want good leadership and good government and so um and I'm humbled by that support mm -hmm. I'm, I'm truly humbled by those that are willing to put their effort and their time into that. So we're doing all the things, and we're doing it all the way up until, the four, until that four, the 14th, you know, of, of Election Day. So it's been good. It's well, been good. I, look, I see your stuff because, again, your district's right across uh, the street. <laughs> right, right across the street. I, I ride up and down Highland, or I have a lot of friends in yeah. Santa Maria and out that way. And I see your signs. I know you're out there campaigning because I know people in that area that will ask me if I know you, uh -huh. right? And uh, so um, I, you know, you're definitely doing the right things. And I do agree 
Um, I, I respect people who want to run for public office because it's it's not the, the everyone thinks it's this some plum job. It's not. It's work. If it's you're going to do it right, it's going to be work. It's going to be work. But it's usually people who want to see change and who want to make a difference. Mm -hmm, so um, sure. I appreciate you doing hey, and, it. And I'll say this: it's it's a family affair. My little yeah. kids. It's really fun. My daughter is. This has turned into a lot of civics lessons for her because she's like, so mom, when I'm when I'm president, make laws, and I'm like, so here's the deal: Congress makes laws, and the president. <laughs> so it's been fun, but they're 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 knocking with me some days. And oh, we, cool. When it, when it was super super hot, you know, they they sometimes they couldn't, um, but and they're coming up and interacting, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's interesting. I want them to understand that the why mm -hmm. we're doing this as a family, mm -hmm. and that why mom is stepping out is because I care about the community, I care about my district, I care about the state, mm -hmm. and so that's again that legacy of mm -hmm. like making decisions for generations sure. to come where sure. they see that and that important part. Of, of just you know committing your life and, and being willing to serve so yeah it um i did it for 12 years uh, yep. <laughs> and um and i loved it i loved it. what i loved the most though was the people right mm -hmm. and that i worked with and uh there was nothing better than going into a school and, and and meeting with the teachers and the kids and their families and to this day i will be somewhere and i will be you know at a grocery store or whatever and i'll have someone come up, run up and hug me and thank mm -hmm. me for what I did for their children when it was really the teachers, the principals, they were the ones who did it. Mm -hmm. I just tried to get out of their way yeah, and give them yeah, the resources absolutely. that they needed. And state government's a, a big job. It's a very difficult challenge. So again, I appreciate you uh, taking on that challenge. So is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience about the campaign or any other things before we wrap up? Well, it's it's been awesome to, to just sit and talk and to hear, you know, just b go back and forth into your listeners. I would just say, you know, I would love for people, um, if you're, you know, in our district, hey, and if you're not in the district, you know, feel free. Check me out on votemilychenevere.com. Um, there's a lot of information there. Um, but, look, I um, I was telling someone the other day, we were, they were asking me again why I was doing this. And I said, look, I don't need another title. Mm -hmm. I said this is not about title or um, being put on a pedestal. And I said, I carry two of the greatest titles right now as mom and wife. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's there's very few things that make me tear up. But, you know, you start talking about your kids oh, yeah. and legacy. That's a big part of it. Um, but I'm doing this because I genuinely think that people are looking for leadership. And um, I think our state um, has its best days ahead. And I, and I think the only way to really fight that and move forward is to have that sense of urgency, yet yet positivity mm -hmm. and hope. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I believe in that because born here, want to want to stay here pl always planned on staying here like this is where i'm at so it's like let's do something to make it better yeah so i just want people to understand that you know that that, that is my that is my message is that I, I i think our best our best days are ahead of us well thank you so much a thank you for running and offering yourself uh, for public service thank you for being a guest on our show mm -hmm. uh as we move along and get to run us we'll have you back if yeah. you'd like to come and uh, check us out absolutely absolutely and uh so we are the pelican brief i'm david tapman your host uh you can can, uh, find us on all of the podcasting platforms. You can also find us on social media at Pelican Brief 225. You can find us on YouTube at the Pelican Brief 225. And you can email us at uh, the Pelican Brief 225 at gmail.com. So thanks again. That's our show for today. And we'll see you next time. Pelican Brief is an off-script production.